Hewlett Packard, as you know, is splitting into two companies with really quite different businesses. The first company is HP Inc., which is our printer and personal systems group, and then Hewlett Packard Enterprise, which is our server, storage, networking, converged infrastructure, cloud, software, and services business. One's really focused at the enterprise and solution selling to help customers take their legacy IT system and move it to the next generation, and the other is, you know, fantastic printers and PCs, ultimately 3D printing and immersive reality reality, but different customers, different competitors, and really, you know, just completely different businesses. If we're sitting here one year from the split, what do you hope that HP, the two HPs, HP Inc. and HP Enterprise, what do you hope they look like, Meg? Well, I hope they continue to look like really strong companies that are servicing the customer's needs brilliantly and that we are at the top of everybody's list when they're trying to think through on the Hewlett Packard Enterprise side, you know, what their future IT needs ought to look like. I hope we're the first people they think of and I hope HP Inc. continues to lead in personal systems and printing. And then uh, on the Hewlett Packard Enterprise side, we need to grow. So growth and being at the top of everyone's list for, you know, when you've got a challenge, who do you call? Let me ask you this, Meg. Uh, obviously, you've noted splitting the companies is a risky move. Um, I sat down recently with Jim Chanos, who is a head fund manager and, and who has been pretty bearish on HP, and I want to play for you what he told sure. me he thinks about the split. The split is, epitomizes everything that's wrong with Hewlett Packard. It's another piece of financial engineering. They're not improving their products. They're not getting the best people. And, and in Silicon Valley, if you're not growing, you're dying. I think any tech company that's losing revenues to the tune of 5 to 10% a year ultimately is doomed. What do you say to him, Meg, and to those who, who don't see what you see in splitting the companies? Yeah, so I would say, listen, we have two very interesting markets, and by splitting these companies, we're going to be able to be more nimble, faster, with more innovation. And if you look at what we have done with the company over the last four years, boy, we have reignited the innovation engine. Everything from all-flash storage array to converged infrastructure to the machine to, I said, uh, immersive computing. So we have ignited the innovation engine, we've um, delevered the company significantly, mm -hmm. and we are poised now, I think, to take advantage of these two new markets. And uh, obviously our objective is to uh, to prove the naysayers wrong and uh, and deliver for customers. HP is unique in that it is yeah. uh, uh, the only Fortune 500 company, you've got a, a female CEO, female CFO, and a female lead director. I'm interested, though, Meg, you've got less than 10% of tech CEOs are women. Um, who is it incumbent on to change that? I think it's incumbent on all of us, honestly, um, not only as business people, but as citizens. And my view is we have to start with K through 12 education for girls around science, technology, engineering, and math. And then we have to encourage them to stick with it through junior high, high school, and then college. I, I wonder if you think that quotas are an answer like we've seen in, in Europe uh, for some countries for boards or sort of what the answer is because we've been hearing this for a long time you have to educate girls you yeah. have to keep them in STEM and the results at the top keep being the same I don't think quotas are the answer but you do have to require a diverse slate of mm -hmm. candidates if you're hiring a general counsel for a new company you've got to say listen I want to see women I want to see men I'd like to see some African Americans and Latinos I just want to make sure I see everybody that is out there and what I've learned over many years is to find the best talent you have to go get them you have to convince them to come and uh, you have to be very proactive about it. You joined uh, eBay 98 before the last sort of tech bust. And a lot of people talk about, are we in a bubble now? Where might the bust come? I'm just interested in your read yeah. on tech right now. Anything uh, frothy that you see, Meg? Well, first of all, it is an incredibly exciting time in Silicon Valley. I've never seen anything quite like this here. Huh. It is a renaissance. That said, there are certain sectors that are trading at very high multiples. You know, you still have companies that don't have a lot of revenue, have no profits, and are, are trading at extraordinary valuations and are very, very young companies, right? They haven't actually proven themselves. So I worry that we're, there's certain sectors here that are b bordering on being too frothy, but I will tell you there's many different opinions of that in the Valley. I just tend to be a little conservative about these things, and because I lived through that 1990, 
98, 99, 2000, 2001 time frame, when I see, you know, pre-revenue companies or very small revenue companies with no profit that are valued um, on, in extraordinary ways, I just think, you know, gosh, they may be a little out ahead of themselves. When we sat down in June, you told me that you were very worried about the U.S. economy. And then just this week, this very anemic growth reading comes in, U.S. economy growing at one and a half percent. What's your read right now? Yeah. Well, I have to say it feels a little better to me than it did in June. Good. I wouldn't say I'm, you know, incredibly bullish, but you can see tech spending pick up. You can see confidence in the CEOs I meet. There's a bit more confidence in the business and confidence in the U.S. economy. But it's been, you know, we had a very deep recession. It took a long time to start to come out of it. But I do feel like there's momentum here. And it may be fragile momentum, but it does feel better to me than it did when we talked in June. So I'm optimistic.